This is Twit. The hopeful news is there's a lot of amazing stuff going on. I spent a chapter in Estonia. They're trying to sort of rebuild the social contract between individuals and um, government. Former I, Soviet satellite former state. Former Soviet satellite state, full of techies. It's like a big version of Leo's show. I mean, everyone is... I in, love Estonia. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure you've had some people on... I, oh, yeah, yeah. And we've I've been there and... Uh, yeah. Uh, they had the digital citizen card. and So, right. Yeah. So, they've got the digital citizen card. They have a very transparent, digitally run government. But they're also, I think, confronting this issue of anonymity. I saw someone posted on anonymity, anonymity saying that's the problem. And that's the problem with user-generated content. When people can be anonymous, they lie. They disrespect people. They, yeah. you know, they insult women. They insult minorities. They, they claim to be one person. When it's a not. sine qua non of trolling that you have to be anonymous so i think what <clears throat> although there are some public trolls like yiannopoulos milo yiannopoulos yeah who's a pub very everybody knows who he was i just got an email from him actually did you i have to admit i know him he's not as bad as he seems although he, <laughs> okay he's still, he, be very careful there andrew because he's still pretty bad but I mean, <laughs> you could be tarred with that brush but, if you're not yeah careful. and i'm sorry you know milo used to he he was an admirer of my you know earlier work yeah. so anyway but, i always um, got the feeling that everything he said was cynical and yeah you know calculated yeah, but there, that wasn't genuine but, but coming back to estonia what i think the estonians are yeah he's the ultimate troll what yeah. estonians are trying to pioneer so he's the counter example to an, uh, the anonymity right i mean at least he's accountable for what he says even what he says is so appalling but anyway coming back to estonia i think what they are pioneering and also singapore is pioneering i have a chapter on singapore is a new kind of world where we we're no longer anonymous it's it's a radically transparent world and a lot of libertarians will say well that's terrible that's Singapore's an authoritarian state well, do you want to be uh, yeah well singapore I mean, i'm more ambivalent about but let's just use the example of estonia where there's openness and the understanding is that, for example, you can't post on Estonian newspapers. You've you got to use your sort of official account. So you can't have trolls on Estonian newspapers. And the police, of course, can look at your records if you do something wrong. But the interesting thing is it's a social contract of reciprocity. So the Estonian state or the government or the police can't start <coughs> looking at your records without telling you. So what the, I think what the Estonians are pioneering yeah. is a kind of... Post Full transparency. Equal transparency. Equal transparency. What the Estonians, and I'm ambivalent about this, I'm not convinced it's right, but I talked to their president and he basically says, look, we live in a post-privacy age. In, big, in the, the age of big data with smart cars and smart homes and smart everything else, we can't rely on the privacy of the 19th century. So if you accept that, we need to architect, we need to build a world where we have rights in uh, in an increasingly transparent place. So I think the, that's the most interesting thing that Estonia is doing. And I think they're really pioneering that. Yeah, you mentioned in here the Marshall and Brandeis uh, uh, article about uh, privacy, which I um, think, to some degree, really established our modern notions of privacy. And it was, but it was built around photography. It was, in yeah, a, it that was, was the technology that was, was ruining it was things. It was the Kodak age. It wasn't the age of Instagram yeah, and Twitter. Yeah. Or of, uh, you know, of, uh, of iPhones, where everything was so ubiquitous. But they argued for privacy, that well, it was I, a human right. Yeah, and I think it is a human right, but... In a technological age where it's harder and harder to protect ourselves against privacy, we may need to rethink privacy law. So I think the, you know, the, the Brandeis rule, the 19th century understanding of privacy, I support, but in, in, in the 21st century, I'm just not sure how realistic. So I think what the Estonians are doing are pioneering something different. And Singapore too, in terms of their Smart Nation initiative. Now I accept the fact that they're not a full democracy, but they're not totalitarian in the way the Chinese are. So the nightmare model of this is, of course, what China's doing. No privacy Wait, in China. No privacy Face in China. Face recognition. In an authoritarian, to, well, in a Cameras totalitarian, everywhere. but worse than that, in a totalitarian system where you only get a job or a house if you're, if you're politically correct. Right. So these are the big issues we're all going to have to confront. That's the important point to make. You're not prescribing a fix. Yeah, but the I'm fix not saying, would be we need to get involved and, well, and talk I, what, about what it. What I am saying is that we have to confront these issues. I don't think yeah. Americans are even confronting them. No. 
Uh, and I think what the Estonians are doing is really interesting. And I also think we need to, you know, identity is such a complex thing. I go to India in the book. And whilst, you know, we privileged types fetishize privacy and protection of our identity, what I found in India is a huge underclass, the poorest people in, in, in the country have no identity. They have no way of proving who they are, which means they can't get work, they can't, they can't get housing, uh, they can't get health care. So what, the, what I find in, in India is that the ID system there is creating identity to benefit poorer people. So even digital identity is a complex issue. It's very complex. The, the Nazis, in fact, created identity work cards, identity cards that were required to work, mm. solved a problem and created a new one. Right, exactly. And, <laughs> you know, the, this whole issue of ide online identity is so complicated. Yeah. Uh, but the Estonians are doing great work, the Indians, the Singapore. And so, it, you know, I, I spent, the book is, is, is really a travelogue of, yeah, of, of my experiences yeah. around the world, seeing how people are fixing stuff. There is no single fix. There's no, certainly no. no app to fix the future. It's not going to get fixed with blockchain. Whatever Don Tapscott says, it's not going to get fixed with blockchain. <laughs> it's not going to get fixed with virtual reality. It's not going to get fixed with all augmented reality we know the failure of the internet the future didn't get fixed by the internet so it's it's a human fix it's not technology i'm not against technology but we can't just rely on technology